Hello, my babies. Welcome to this message. The main topic of this is genetic engineering. It's not only about food. It's about living beings up to humans, including. There's a little story I want to tell you. There, there once was a ram. And that ram got away. Ran into the wild. And for some years, no one knew of him. Up until a certain point when he was found, his wool was so big on him. It was crushing him. Because it just did not stop growing. It did not grow only up until the point of protecting him. It would continue to grow. And he had so much wool on him. Because he had been in the wild. There was no one to take it off. He was close to death. And this is not an exaggeration. It was crushing him. He was found and saved. And they took, I don't remember exactly how much wool off of him, but it's, uh, it's too much. He even made it into Guinness, the records, you know, the record breaking stuff. <laughs> but this is not a nice story. His name is Chris the Sheep. I saw others call him Shrek. But this ship, sheep, Chris the Ship, the sheep, the sheep. He's a, an example of what genetic engineering does. It started raining. If you can hear that sound, that's rain. And it rains beautifully. Coming back to, to this merino sheep, it was a merino sheep. This is not normal. This species was genetically engineered by humans, more specifically by the Spanish back in the 15th, I, I hope I'm remembering correctly, it, if it's not the 15th century, sorry, but of what I remember, it was the 15th century. In any case, if it's not the 15th century, it's close. It's there. So, it was genetically engineered through, it says that it was engineered through a certain type of breeding. But genetically engineering something doesn't only occur through that method. In any case, they genetically engineered this species so that it would not stop growing wool. That was the whole purpose. So that the farmers, the sheep farmers, could get more wool. And this is one, first of all. This is an example of what humans can do without thinking of others, without compassion. And an example of what genetical engineering can do. It makes a species almost unnatural and this is not only about these sheep you may know it there is a huge list of foods genetically modified foods and genetically engineered foods now to some extent there is a difference between a genetic modification and a genetic engineering 
of a new species. Basically, genetic modification doesn't necessarily come with the idea of creating a new species. It comes with the idea of modifying, altering the DNA, the cellular identity of that species. While genetic engineering is more towards this progressive idea of creating something new. <sighs> yes, there are cases when these two things can happen simultaneously. And in a sense, this is what happened to humans. Humanity was indeed created. It did not evolve as in the evolution of species. And frankly, the evolution of species is largely a myth. Uh, a manipulative tool. But now we're talking about humans. Humans had their DNA corrupted. There are more strands of DNA which nowadays are called junk DNA because to modern science which you, you probably already know by now it's corrupted. It's in the hands of the elites and they can do whatever they want with it and what they want is to give false information to people as to corrupt them further as to manipulate them and keep them in their grasp the modern science the nowadays science says that these strands of dna are useless they don't have any purpose they are just there just like they say this about the wisdom tooth, the tonsils, and I think there are more body parts that they say this about. And it's all false. These, these marvelous beauties, the tonsils, they are there to help you eliminate toxins from your body. The wisdom teeth, are connected to different organs in your body. All teeth are. And those strands of DNA, they are dormant. Humans are capable of much more than you see most of the populace nowadays. But that is because most of the populace lays in this Condition. You know, so many people have used throughout history in different types of literature the term of the human condition. Well, yes, because it has been conditioned. Because it hasn't been free for quite a while. And when I say quite a while, I mean millennia. It's been millennia ago that the human DNA was corrupted and those strands of DNA were put to sleep because those strands of DNA have powerful information within them and with those strands you can activate new realities for you, new dimensions, new realms of consciousness and you can go further than where they want you to be. Where they want you to be is under them in slavery, listening, being obedient, and doing their will. They do not want humans to do their own will. They don't want humans to be free will spe people, species, beings. They want humans to be their slaves. And when I say they, 
I mean other species. Anthropomorphic species. If you do not know what anthropomorphic means, it means a species with a similar appearance, meaning two legs, two hands, a torso, a head. But one of those species is that of the reptilians. Another is that of the Anunnaki. Negatively oriented groups of beings from this galaxy have corrupted humanity, both physically, internally, physically, to the very seed of their DNA. As I said, the identity of their cells, of their physical reality, because this is what cells are. And they also corrupted uh, the mentality of humans. They have worked on both grounds, this physical and the mental. And you see it, think of X-Men. What are X-Men? They are mutants. And in every mutant story, in the X-Men universe. What happens is that when they get through a certain intense event, when they feel very deep emotions, their DNA gets modified. They become mutants and they have these amazing powers that already make them another species. In the X-Men universe, there even is this war between the mutants who have already become another species, more evolved, and the normal humans. That's literally showing you the truth. Of course, it does not necessarily mean that when you activate the dormant DNA strands, you're going to fly or you're going to become like Jean Grey or like Rogue from X-Men. Those are exaggerated things. But you indeed can become more than the human of the past, than the human of, of obedience, than the, the slave. And yes, there are dimensions where you can do a lot. There are dimensions when you, where you are like a magician, like one of those mutants. Those are very high dimensions. It's a long road until then. <laughs> and it's only a matter of how much collective of spe collectives of species want it to happen. There are dimensions where, indeed, you can manipulate reality around you through such powers as telekinesis. If you do not know, telekinesis means exactly this, controlling an object and moving it from a place to another just by power of thought, by consciousness, not touching it physically. And it's a long topic, but it's powerful. There is this question of humanity ascending into a higher dimension at this point, and it's been called the fifth dimension. It is said that humanity is in a current third dimension, third physical dimension, there's a fourth astral dimension, and then there's a fifth dimension, which does still relate to physicality, but is it involves a higher consciousness, consciousness of love and of freedom. And this is where humanity is heading. Those who will not go this way, they will fall into ruin and literally be part of the bottomless pit.
I am talking about this because the more people talk about this, the more chances there are for more humans to activate their dormant DNA and become the superheroes, you know? <laughs> because you are the hero of your own journey. Your hero is yourself. <sighs> you are here, you're literally incarnate at a time of great liberation and you're breaking the chains from within at the cellular level. So congratulations. I love you so much. Keep ascending.